Hello, we have a crisis in baseball. Ted Williams, in his entire career, averaged 37 of these. Every year of his career, he still had 521 home runs. In 1921, Joe DiMaggio did this 13 times. He still had 30 home runs. We're talking about strikeouts. There's an alarming rate of strikeouts going on in Major League Baseball, and hitters don't even seem to care. See, I have the arrows pointed to the elbow up. We're going to talk about that elbow a little bit later. Hitters just are striking out at a huge rate compared to what they used to, and it seems to be coming the accepted norm. Here's the numbers. In 2014, there were 6,810 more strikeouts than there were in 2005. They're also called strikeouts caves. That is an obscene amount of increase in from 2005 to 2014. A lot of people say pitching has gotten better, specialized in later innings. I agree with that, but I'll counteract that. There's been four teams added since 1993, so that's a minimum of 44 pitchers that are now in big leagues since 1993 who would be considered minor leaguers before 1993. And it's all about attitude. That top picture there, you see, that is Barry Bonds, the all-time home run leader in baseball. He chokes up. You ask a high school kid or even a little later to choke up, they look at you like you're nuts now. Or bunny. You ask a kid to bunt, they think they're wasting in a bat. It's a part of the game. What right do I have to speak about hitting a baseball? I'm not a major leaguer, and I'm going to talk about major leaguers here. The First Amendment gives me that right. I can speak on anything I want. It doesn't mean I have the right to be heard. I can certainly talk about it, but it's something I've done my whole life in baseball. Who's going to be on my bench? First, it's going to be Bill Robinson. He was the hitting instructor for the 1986 Mets and the 2003 Florida Marlins. They were both World Series champions. He was also with the Pirates in 1979 when they won the World Series. He had 24 homers. I attended a lot of his hitting camps. And then John Vukovich, who was very good friends with uh, Mr. Bill Robinson, he was a beloved Phillies coach here. He and Mr. Robinson spent a lot of time, extra time for me, at the Bill Robinson hitting clinics that I attended in South Jersey when I was younger. And it really meant a lot to me. What are we talking about today? It's basically what they taught me, the basic hitting fundamentals. These are probably the two best hitters I'll ever see, Barry Bonds, Tony Gwynn. We already talked about Barry Bonds, the home run king. He had choked up with every pitch. Tony Gwynn, see that elbow down, I like that. I don't know that he ever popped up once. The first part about hitting a baseball is your knuckles that you use to knock on a door. Knock, knock. Well, you want to line those knuckles up like this so you can grip the bat. I can show you if I grip here, I can pull out. If I grip here like a bat, I can't pull my arm and my finger out. It gives you a much stronger grip on the bat and, free, and unlocks your wrist. Next is plate coverage. When I'm standing at the plate, I want to be able to get the barrel of the bat to the outside part of the plate. I put this here because I don't know what this guy's doing just to demonstrate Major League Baseball players don't always do the right thing. This guy's trying to score a run, and there's home plate. I don't know what he's doing. The stance. Your feet should be about shoulders width apart, and your hands should be high above the strike zone. Up here, Kevin Euclid, we'll talk about him. Beggio, he's got a really wide stance. Mike Trout has a great one right there. You just hate that elbow up, which we will talk about right now. Your elbow up or down. A major league hitter has a tenth of a second whether to swing, take, or get out of the way of the ball. When you swing, you have to drop your elbow, so why leave it up? Keep it down. Hitting a baseball is tough enough as it is without that wasted motion of having to drop that elbow. Next is your stride. You want to stride about six to eight inches. And notice that a player's hands, when he strides, his hands, or you can see his back, moves back. You're getting this sort of the cocking phase of hitting and you want to keep that front foot closed. You don't want to open it up like this. With your hands high above the strike zone, when you swing, this, you should swing down on the ball. They teach a lot of this level swinging now. I think that's what's leading to strikeout. But how I was taught, and if you swing down on the ball, hit on top of the ball, that's how you hit hard ground balls and good line drives. As your swing continues, you're going to transfer the weight from the back of your foot to the front of your foot, and you want to swing through the ball. What I mean by that is you want to pretend there's a ball here, 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 and here as you swing all the way through. You don't want to stop right here after you hit. Some tips to help you out. Two great hitters who I idolize. When they swing, the palm of their top hand, if you notice, is facing up. You always want it to face up. If it's rolled over like this, that's a term in baseball. Say, ah, the pitcher got the guy to roll over. You've just hit a weak ground ball and got yourself out. The head on the ball. Two tricks here. This is Manny Ramirez. You're going to see two pictures of him here. You want to keep the left shoulder, left chin into the left shoulder as the pitcher's lining up. And then when you take your stride, and when you're ready to swing, 
you're going to transfer, you're going to go from your left shoulder, left chin, you're going to bring your right shoulder into your right chin like that, and that will keep your head on the ball, and you can see that there in Manny and Ramirez. If you're looking like this, and the chin and shoulder aren't connected, then you're not looking down on the ball. So that's a trick to help you. Back foot, I think you should drag the leg as Albert Pohlholz is doing here. You can see the dirt coming up. A lot of coaches teach to spin on the leg, and that gets the hip power and the hip torque. It's up to you. I think that can sometimes open you up and be susceptible. So in conclusion, here's Kevin Euclid's terrible stance. Works for him. You see all three of these. The goal of every hitter is to get right here at this spot. Just get here to this spot however you can. I think I've showed and demonstrated a way to teach younger kids how to hit the correct way with these basic fundamentals. Thank you very much.